Hi, I'm Irving. You have just entered Cartertopia. The episode is called Death in Disguise and we get right into the disguise part. This is clearly either A, a transgender woman, which was something he almost never saw in the 70s, B, a drag queen, in which case he doesn't have nearly enough makeup, or C, he's a guy who's in disguise because he doesn't want anybody to recognize him. Whatever the case, I doubt he's up to anything good. He finds a paper stashed behind one of the pictures on the wall. It includes instructions as well as photos of Steve, Diana, and someone else we don't get to see yet. He ponders the photos, then the phone rings. Yeah, I got the pictures, but those people are your problems. The deal is, you take care of your end, and I'll take care of mine, and everybody will be happy. In other words, I don't move until that Prince woman is eliminated. And he's afraid of the IADC, especially Diana. It would appear she's already built a reputation as the toughest agent out there, and he doesn't want to tangle with her. Dude, you're still wearing a bunch of blue eyeshadow. You don't think that's going to draw some attention? That is not an eyeshadow remover. If you try to use it as one, there's a good chance you'll only do it once. The lady in question is meeting an informant on horseback. Not asking. Hi. Right. All right, what is this information that's supposed to be so vital to the IADC? I'm not here. Follow me. Why not here? There's nobody around. The horses only understand limited English. This is the perfect place. Where's he taking her? Get her. Got a waster. Into a trap, of course. Her informant takes off and ultimately climbs a tree. Diana must not have seen that because she stops and transforms pretty much right under that same tree. We've been developing her ability with animals gradually over the past two seasons, and now she has some kind of telepathy with them so she can give them simple commands. As I said, they only understand limited English. The two hitmen take off when they see Wonder Woman. Why were you setting up Diana Prince? Money! Cool, now you can hire a lawyer. He doesn't know anything beyond what he was told to do, but there was something interesting in his personal effects. This will confirm demolition of Carrie as requested. My people will move on their respective assignments with all due speed. Completion guaranteed before 9.30 a.m. 26th. W.N. Whoever Carrie stands for is the primary target while eliminating Diana was one of the respective assignments. It's not hard for them to conclude that W.N. is Woodward Nightingale, a well-known professional assassin. Time to figure out who Carrie is. That big industrialist who's in Washington for the trade meetings. Yeah, uh, Carlo in... Indrazano. Indrazano. He'd certainly qualify for a Nightingale assassination. Let me see what I do with that. Yeah, here it is. His full name is Carlo Amadeo Ricardo Indrazano. That was easy. Maybe too easy. Let's check in on the man himself. I wouldn't be too concerned, Carlo. Two million bushels of wheat lost to mildew, and I shouldn't be too concerned. It's unavoidable. Besides, it means that we get a better price for the remaining 10 million bushels. The other guy is Marius, his partner. Carlo is less interested in him than he is in all the good-looking women around him. Ah, yes. Uh, I want uh, two of that one. I wouldn't want to uh, slight my friends here. There are many things I'll never understand. The IADC has insisted one of their uh, agents 
God thing. They've signed a woman to you. Yes. Uh oh. I can imagine what she looks like. Oh, that's uh, probably what my bodyguard will look like. I hope he has a strong heart because it's going to go into shock. At a remote location behind a secret door, we enter the lair of the elusive Woodward Nightingale. Hi, right, Violet. Say hello to Beamer. He's going to be working with us. Hi. Hi. Hey, how's the typing? Don't ask. <laughs> Violet used to be our number one hit lady. Hit person? For some reason, Nightingale decided women were better off doing office work. She's terrible at it and hates it. Perfect. Perfect, Violet Louise. Mm -hmm. Except you spell sincerely backwards again. Plus, she's dyslexic. She must have done something to make Nightingale very angry. This is torture for her. Nightingale's office is a study in murder. Weapons of every shape and size on the walls. If it's horrible, he has it. Oh, yeah. yeah murder through the centuries. <laughs> the state taught him how to be an executioner. Then they stopped capital punishment, and the only thing he knows how to do is kill. The state taught him to use that stuff? And by the way, Mr. Nightingale, that's what night school was for. Learn a new trade. Hey, these pictures. <laughs> Those are just some of his victims. That's where the next was. Nightingale has been on the phone all this time. He finishes the call, and when he looks at his henchman, he does not look happy. I want to see what that cannon does. He's going to shoot him with it. I just know it. We're sort of channeling Bond villains here, and that's what one of them would do. And Mr. Krug has told me something about you. He says you have a knack for my line of work. Well, that's nice of you to say, Mr. Nightingale. I didn't say it, Mr. Beamer. This idiot did. Oh, Mr. Nightingale. Shut up. He's going to get the cannon. You botched your assignment, Mr. Krug. There's nothing more to be said. Except that it won't happen again. Now go stand in front of the cannon. Look, we had Diana Prince, but Wonder Woman showed up. That agent must be neutralized before Mr. Starker will undertake his assignment. That's our arrangement. Okay, okay, we'll get her, I promise. Wonder Woman or no Wonder Woman? He sends them on their way. Okay, dude, you took me out to dinner. We went back to your place for drinks. We got a little loose and started playing. We went to your bedroom, got all worked up, and you rolled over and went to sleep. That was not nice. They pose as carpet layers and head to La Maison Verte, a restaurant where they know Carla will be dining. That means Diana Prince will be there, too. The name of the place means green room. That's the place where you wait to go on stage, and there's usually junk food snacks of some kind. So they're named after a junk food room. But when you say it in French, suddenly it becomes an upscale restaurant. If I go to the bathroom, I just make a poop. If I go to the salle de bain, the poop comes out wearing a bow tie. They start cutting a hole in the floor and we cut to Diana arriving. Signor Indressano, your lunch and companion, Miss Prince. Thank you. <laughs> Are you going to eat standing, Mr. Indressano? You left your mouth open. When he finds his voice again, he immediately starts trying to charm her. Mr. Androzano. Uh, Carlo, please. Carlo, I must say that you are everything I expected. With you as my bodyguard, I shall remain uh, eternally in danger. You can see how well it's working. I think she threw up in her mouth a little. He can't get over how she doesn't look like his image of an agent. I left my trench coat in the cleaners. Oh, then I shall have to keep you out of the trenches. Definitely. Are you ready to order, signore? I'm ready for anything. I'm hungry. I get the feeling he's not used to rejection. He better get used to it quick. Nightingale just had a phone conversation with Starker, our cross-dressing hitman. He's still refusing to move until they kill Diana Prince, but Nightingale says that'll be taken care of within the hour, so just do your job. You see? Everything's fine, just as I said. Well, I'm not paying you one million dollars to watch you play businessman. Results? I want results. I'm telling you, your order will be filled by 9.30 tomorrow morning. Hmm. Better be. And Carlo's partner, Marius, is the one behind it all. What a surprise. Carlo is still on the hunt. I never dreamed that they would uh, provide me with such an 
exquisite escort. I'd rather you didn't regard me as your escort. Your life is in danger. I'm here on business. Nonsense. For me, a beautiful woman can mean only pleasure. Please slap him after you change to Wonder Woman. Oh, oh God. I'm sorry. Cold water on it. I, I'm sorry. Here. Yeah, it's all right. Let's just look on the bright side. You can finish your shrimp now. Like a lot of rich guys, he can't take no for an answer. And he's too thick to figure out that she probably did that on purpose. Outside, Krug calls the restaurant. Pardon, Signor Intrisano, there is a phone call for Miss Prince. Oh, she uh, stepped away. I'll take the call. Certainly, over there. Oh boy, this is gonna be good. Hey, hey, hey. This isn't Diana Prince. You think? They decide they'll take him as bait. They may wish they hadn't done that. He tries another road. She's messing with him. Everywhere he tries to go, she gets there first, but she hasn't really tried to stop him yet. Beamer decides there's only one thing to do. Cut bait and go home. You mean... You saved me? Yes. But that's impossible. It's ridiculous. You're a woman. Please do it. Nightingale is taking a call from Starker. It's time for the next step of his job. Listen carefully. Her name is Major Anita Finlay. That is correct. Finlay. She will be driving an official army car. Green. License plate G108-2135. Steve and Eve. Hey, that's kind of fun. Steve and Eve, they have a peep because they don't know what Nightingale has up his sleeve. Major Finley. Yes. Oh, hi. I'm Phil Murray. Steve Trevor asked me to greet you and show you to your parking oh. space. How very thoughtful. Major Trevor must be as nice as I've heard he is. Oh, nicer. You'll like him a lot. Now, look, if you just go down to the end and turn to the right, you'll find a parking space over there. Okay, thank you. By the time Major Finley reaches Steve's office, she's changed from a blonde to a redhead. Welcome to Washington, Major. I hope your stay at the IADC is a pleasant one. I'm looking forward to it, Major Trevor. Major Finley is an engineering officer and she's there to do something that's not really clear. But she needs all the plans to the building and Steve gets them for her. Got the plans for the ductwork, wiring diagram, masonry specs. That's it. There you are, Corporal. Thank you. And there you are, Major. Wonderful. Diana is headed home with Carlo following her like a faithful puppy dog. How wonderful it is, Diana, that my life is in danger and is receiving such uh, beautiful protection. Push him down the stairs, please. <laughs> I think you'd probably change your mind if you saw me in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could make me change my mind about you. Well, thank you for a very lovely evening. Good night. Good night, but the best part of the evening is still ahead. Oh, that's right. The part where I go to sleep. Are you refusing me? Mm -hmm. Is that clear enough for you? Mm -hmm. What an amusing girl you are. <clears throat> Who's that? That is uh, James Dernier. He's my replacement for the rest of the evening. You'll like him. He looks great in a trench coat. Go try your moves on him. You never know. Wait. Whoa, dude, hands off. I'll pick you up here at 8.45 in the morning. We'll play tennis and then have breakfast. Make it 9.45, my office, no breakfast, I haven't got a deal. Good night. Splendid. Has he gotten the hint yet? Uh, thanks again. Thank you. Lovely lady. No, he hasn't. He still tried to move on her. She needs to let the assassins have this one. In her office, Major Finley is going to work. <laughs> We have what's obviously a bomb. Where is it going to go? We 
we have a hair dryer. Is Starker that vain about his disguise? That's not where the battery goes. You know, you could just use the desk lighter to do that. Kind of overkill, don't you think? Diana, sleeping in full makeup, wakes up to some strange noises. <laughs> They're going old school. Just break in and shoot her. Did you see any blood, gentlemen? Did you check to make sure she was under there? Are you sure you didn't just ruin a perfectly good comforter? Well, there goes 50 bucks. Not to mention the pillows. He's using it to cut through some grating so he can get into the ductwork. Aren't those things made so you can do that with a screwdriver? Krug and Beamer hop in their car and take off. <laughs> Ouch, she loses three points for that landing. Starker has finished cutting through that thing and is in the ductwork with his bomb. And we finally see what the target is. Iraq is the target. Why would Marius want to blow up Iraq? But now the word demolition in that telegram makes sense. They meant it literally. They didn't know she was on the roof. They didn't hear that enormous crash when she landed on it. These guys need to be in jail for safekeeping. She lassos them and learns how to find Nightingale's hideout. Get in. You will remain immobile until the police come for you. We do get creative on this show. I like it. Wonder Woman heads down to confront Nightingale. She breaks through his security door and disarms Violet. Woodward Nightingale. Cage and all. What you've left of it. Please, come in. We'll have a chat. I suggest you stay right where you are, Cupcake. I'm afraid you've drawn up your last contract, Nightingale. What a pity. My brilliant career over just like that. You should have ended that career when you were laid off your job as uh, executioner. And let all that knowledge go to waste. Why, that would have been criminal. He's really going to try it on her. He should have used it on Krug instead. I'm really interested in your gallery of victims. Ah, oh, but you ought to be interested in this one. It is, it has for quite some time been intended for you. Park it, Cupcake. Time to get down to it. Who is the target? You have me. But at least I have the satisfaction of knowing you will be unable to prevent my latest and greatest victim from getting its just reward. It's. As in an inanimate object, yes. <sighs> Come on, we know it's someone with the initial C-A-R-I. <laughs> no. No, no, my dear. You see... You see, my reluctant secretary, Violet Louise, suffers from a form of dyslexia. She, she frequently spells things backwards. It takes Wonder Woman longer than it should to put it together. You're hired to destroy a computer? For one million dollars. Why? Like many of my victims, it knew too much. It was inadvertently programmed with information which would have exposed a plot to ruin Carlo and leave Marius in control of their business empire. The computer would have revealed Marius's plot at its regular readout. Said readout is scheduled to happen in four minutes. Starker's bomb is scheduled to go off at the same time. She ties them up and heads out. I bet you never see her behind a typewriter. You'd be mistaken about that, but we'll let it pass. 
Wonder Woman is running and jumping through the countryside, while Starker, now Major Finley again, is wrapping things up and getting ready to make his escape. Not far away, Carlo is here for his 9.45 appointment with Diana. Except she's not here. Well, she is. Sort of. Wonder Woman has reached the building. Excuse me. Steve. Now, you've all got to stay out. Steve, I want you to clear the area and shut this door behind right, me. Get back, everyone. Nightingale should have known better than to underestimate Wonder Woman. In good TV fashion, she locates the bomb at the last second. Good morning. Please stand by for my 0930 readout. That's the readout that will get Marius arrested. What about Starker? Whoa. Here. Allow me. It's all right. I believe Carla was actually hoping Diana would bop him, and I don't think that's what he had in mind. You know, Major, you really ought to change your hairstyle. Something like this. Gentlemen. Carlo helped by getting knocked unconscious. It's the most useful he's been the whole episode. How could my partner, my, my good friend, do such a thing? It has to do with greed, Carlo. Sometimes you can't trust even your friends. Carlo, you seen a doctor about that shiner? Hmm. It's nothing. I, uh, bumped into a door. A fake woman gave it to him, and Wonder Woman had to rescue him again. His whole world is falling apart. I was not fooled. Not even for a moment. Would you have captured that dangerous assassin had I not risked my very life? Of course not, Carlo. We are very grateful. Yeah, bite your tongue, Steve. Let the little man protect his precious ego. He reminds me of somebody who's pretty famous right now. I can't think who it is. Oh, it'll come to me eventually. The idea of a network of assassins like that sent on assignment by a central office is an interesting one. Nightingale himself doesn't do the field work anymore, but his reputation is what brings in the business. It's kind of sick, but brilliant. Good thing Wonder Woman brought it down. We never did learn why Starker was so adamant about Diana being killed before he would act. Why her specifically? We'll never know. And in the end, he did the job anyway, even though he knew she was still alive, so the whole thing was academic. I admit I'm having a hard time with Wonder Woman being able to cover 47 miles in two minutes. Last I heard, she wasn't the Flash. But that's my only gripe. It was a fun episode, and I really enjoyed watching Diana put Carlo in his place. I don't think I need to say any more about that. Steve is doing very little these days. He's mainly there to give Diana information, and he gets most of that from Iraq. So Diana could go directly to Iraq herself and we could eliminate Steve and not lose anything. Except the lawsuit when Lyle Wagner sues us for breach of contract. I guess we'll keep him. I'm Irving and you are now exiting Cartertopia. Let's put his arms like this. <laughs> <laughs>